All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video of mine. This one's going to be special, very special in fact, because I'm going to be working on this here, NVIDIA Quadro GV100, the single most expensive computer hardware component that I will have ever worked on, probably. If you were to buy one of these brand new, it would cost you pretty much exactly 10,000 euros, which I believe at the uh, current conversion rate is about 11,000 US dollars. And of course, who would I be if uh, I didn't take it apart to take a closer look at it? So without further ado, I'm going to start removing screws. All right, with uh, all the screws removed, It should just come right apart. Wow. Okay, I have a better idea. All right. <laughs> this thing was on there, man. Oh, wow. Oh, it's such a mess. <laughs> this thing was on there. Wowzers, that thing is big. All right, now with the <laughs> with the heatsink finally gone, I had to remove the uh, the shroud because it was just so it was very stuck on there. Um, probably due to the sheer amount of thermal paste, but Heatsink's gone. I <laughs> can finally take a closer look at it. All right, now, Volta. I did some research um, prior to the video, obviously, and uh, it is like I I knew going into this that it was going to be a big GPU. Uh, <laughs> But I had not expected it to be this big. Uh, if you thought a T102 uh, was big, yeah, look at this. It is absolutely massive. I think the GPU itself is um, 815 square millimeters. But don't forget that this thing uh, uses HBM2 memory so the GPU package is going to be even larger because of that so that's a lot of thermal paste on here while I'm cleaning it off let's talk a bit about the PCB uh, that this uh, GPU comes with um, obviously because it's a quadro there's not going to be uh, custom models um, but uh, if memory serves me, uh, this is an absolute behemoth of a 16-phase VRM for the, the GPU. I think each of these power stages uh, is rated for 70 amps. And um, yeah, this thing is a 250-watt GPU. So it is actually um, a really, really good PCB. So... Though something that I actually uh, didn't expect to see is the missing third um, HPM2 phase. Buildzoid did a PCB analysis of this PCB, but he used uh, pictures of a Titan V. And um, a Titan V has 12 gigs of HPM2, but more importantly, it has one of the four um, HPM2 stacks disabled to get to that uh, capacity. So I had actually expected the third HPM2 phase to be present on this PCB based on the fact that not only does this GPU have all of its four HPM2 stacks enabled, it also has 32 gigabytes uh, of HPM2. So interesting to see that even on this, I, I believe as high end as it gets Volta GPU, the third HPM2 phase is not present. All right, with the GPU now properly 
cleaned up, I think you can get an even better appreciation of how big this, uh, this GPU is. It is absolutely massive. The last thing that I want to do to this GPU in this video would have to be this thing right here. Let me put the GPU aside for now. This is upside down. This right here is uh, a water block for the uh, Quadro GV100. I was actually quite surprised to find that EK still makes water blocks for the Quadro GV100 because as far as I'm concerned, um, Volta is not being manufactured anymore, so these are either um, new old stock or EK actually still makes these, but either way, um, they had them in stock. I got my hands on one because, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I was going to water call the Quadro GV100 if I can still get a water block for it that easily. So, but yeah, uh, with that said, I will be getting the GPU ready to uh, install the, the water block. All right, now, at last, the GPU block is installed. Um, there's actually one thing that I do want to talk about, um, and this is actually not just an issue with this particular GPU block and uh, backplate, but also with other um, blocks and backplates from EK, and that is just the screws um, for the backplate, specifically these four right here. Uh, are just simply too short. EK, or the, the manual, um, says to use uh, six millimeter screws here, but they are just barely long enough to thread into the standoffs on the block. We are talking about, like, at best a millimeter of um, thread going into the the standoffs and given that the standoffs are i'm assuming made of brass you're almost begging it to strip right so i was lucky enough to have a uh, multiple um like gpu water block screw kits um from ek lying around from multiple uh, water block installs uh, because a single a single one of these um, kits right here only comes with two 8mm screws, right? So EK really should include 8mm um, screws with this, this backplate. There's so many more threads of that screw now in the standoff that just it's so much more secure. Because it's, it's, you do want to tighten these down because there's thermal pads on the, on the backplate here that you want to compress. So other than that, the install was more or less flawless. Some of the screw holes, unfortunately, didn't quite line up, specifically this one in the front right here and these two at the back, like these ones, but I was able to get them in there. But uh, yeah, with that said, the GPU water block install is done and uh, all that's left to do right now would be to put it in my workstation and see uh, how well it does, though I don't think I'm going to be filming that because I mean, swapping out a GPU, right? You take the old one out, put the new one in. There's really not a lot to it. But uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed uh, this content, consider leaving a like on the video and also consider subscribing to the channel. Any support is genuinely appreciated and does go a long way in keeping new content coming. With that said, I wish you guys an absolutely amazing day and hope to see you guys again in the very next video. Bye for now.